after reading this module you would be able to understand macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids are asymmetric in structure due to the constituent asymmetric amino acids and sugars and therefore absorb plain polarized light. The techniques of optical rotatory dispersion ORD and circular dichroism CD which depend on the absorbance of plane polarized light can be used to study the structure of macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids in solutions. Conformational changes in macromolecules manifested in the CD or ORD spectra which result in functional changes are useful for correlating structure and function of macromolecules. Let me introduce you to this module. Light is an electromagnetic radiation with two mutually perpendicular oscillating electric and magnetic fields. The electrical vector is the plane of polarization and a light source is a collection of waves with all possible electrical planes. When light is passed through a polarized screen or a Nicol prism only a single plane of polarized light is called plane polarized light is then transmitted. Plane polarized light in turn is composed of left and right circularly polarized light waves. The nature of these waves is diagrammatically indicated. Molecules which have asymmetric carbon centers such as amino acids and sugars absorb either the right or left circularly polarized light and are therefore considered optically active. The electrical vector of the plane polarized light can interact with asymmetric molecules which can reduce the velocity a phenomenon called refraction described by the index of refraction n or decrease the amplitude of the wave a phenomenon called absorption described by the molecular or molar absorption coefficient epsilon. Depending on whether the refractive index is for left or right circularly polarized light, the refractive indices are designated NL or NR. Similarly, if the molar absorption coefficient is for left or right circularly polarized light the designation is epsilon L and epsilon R respectively. The index of refraction N or eta is a function of the wavelength lambda of the light. Molecules which are optically active are measured in instruments called polarimeters for recording the angle of rotation alpha lambda. This factor can be described in the equation alpha lambda is equal to 180 d divided by lambda brackets open n l minus n r brackets closed. The bracketed term alpha at lambda is called specific rotation and is equal to brackets alpha lambda is equal to alpha lambda divided by dc wherein alpha lambda is the observed rotation in degrees, d is the light path in decimeters and c is the concentration in grams per liter. Also bracketed capital M lambda 
is equal to alpha lambda m divided by 100 dc in which m is the molecular weight. In the case of macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids which are polymers, the mean residual rotation bracketed small m alpha is usually described by the equation bracketed small m alpha is equal to alpha lambda m o divided by 100 dc in which m o is equal to the molecular weight of the polymer divided by number of monomers. Optical rotatory dispersion or ORD spectrum is a curve that relates the wavelength dependence of optical rotation expressed as alpha or bracketed alpha or capital M bracketed or small m bracketed. When circularly polarized light is differentially absorbed or the extinctions coefficients for left and right circularly polarized light is epsilon L and epsilon R then delta epsilon is equal to epsilon L minus epsilon R wherein delta epsilon is called circular dichroism or CD. If epsilon L is greater than epsilon R then the CD is positive. Since CD is due to differential absorption of left or right circularly polarized light the amplitudes of the transmitted waves will differ leading to elliptically polarized light. Hence instead of measuring delta epsilon the ellipticity or theta is plotted versus wavelength the plot being the CD spectrum. Theta is related to delta epsilon as remember that theta can be converted to degrees by multiplying by 180 pi which gives theta equal to 32.98 delta epsilon. The historical reported unit of CD experiments is molar ellipticity or bracketed theta which removes its dependence on concentration and path length therefore. Therefore bracketed theta is equal to 3300 delta epsilon where the factor 3300 converts from the units of molar absorptivity to the historical units of degrees centimeter square decimal minus 1. The animation gives you an idea of a propagating light wave which is plane polarized, circularly polarized and elliptically polarized electrical field components. CD spectroscopy is a powerful tool to understand asymmetric conformation of proteins and nucleic acids. Circularly polarized light is obtained by superimposing two plane polarized light waves of same wavelengths and amplitudes but differing in phase by one quarter of a wavelength and 90 degrees in their plane of polarization. As illustrated the CD signal is obtained by the selective absorption of either the right or left circularly polarized vectors 
by a solution of an asymmetric polymer. How is a CD spectrum measured? Described in the figure is a CD instrument. Here light goes through a monochromator and then you can see through a sample wherein a CD spectrum is derived and then detected. Most commercial CD instruments are based on the modulation techniques introduced by Grosjean and Legrand. Light is linearly polarized and passed through a monochromator. The single wavelength light is then passed through a modulating device usually a photoelastic modulator PEM which transforms the linear light to circularly polarized light. The incident light on the sample switches between left circularly polarized light LCP and right circularly polarized light or RCP. As the incident light switches direction of polarization, the absorption changes and the difference in molar absorptivity can be calculated. Now let us look at the applications of CD spectroscopy to study macromolecules. The most widely used application of CD spectroscopy is identifying structural aspects of proteins and DNA. The peptide bonds in proteins are optically active and the ellipticity they exhibit changes based on the local conformation of the molecule. Secondary structures of proteins can be analyzed using the far UV namely 190 to 250 nanometers wavelength region of light. The ordered alpha helices, beta sheets, beta turn and random coil conformations all have characteristic spectra. These unique spectra form the basis for protein secondary structure analysis. It should be noted that in CD only the relative fractions of residues in each conformation can be determined but not specifically where each structural feature lies in the molecule. In reporting CD data for large biomolecules it is necessary to convert the data into a normalized value that is independent of molecular length. To do this the molar ellipticity is divided by the number of residues or monomer units in the molecule. The real value in CD comes from the ability to show conformational changes in molecules. It can be used to determine how similar a wild type protein, wild type meaning an ordinary normal or native protein is to a mutant protein. It can also be used the differences to show the extent of denaturation with a change in temperature or chemical environment. It can also provide information about structural changes upon ligand binding. In order to interpret any of this information the spectrum of the native conformation must be determined. Some information about the tertiary structure of proteins can be determined using near UV spectroscopy. Absorptions between 250 to 300 nanometers wavelength are due to the dipole orientation and surrounding environment of amino acid residues namely 
the aromatic amino acid residues phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan and also to some extent cysteine residues which can form disulfide bonds. Near UV techniques can also be used to provide structural information about the binding of prosthetic groups in proteins. Metal containing proteins can be studied by visible CD spectroscopy. Visible CD light excites the DD transitions of metals in chiral environments. Free ions in solution will not absorb CD light. So, the pH dependence of the metal binding and the stoichiometry can be determined. You can see typical CD spectra for different polypeptide secondary structures such as alpha helices, beta as well as beta terms. Let us turn our attention to another related phenomenon namely optical rotatory dichroism or ORD. Although ORD and CD spectra are based on the same phenomenon of asymmetric molecules such as proteins and nucleic acids interacting with plane and circularly polarized light. The advantage of CD spectroscopy is its ability to resolve bands due to differentially optical, optically active transitions. Nevertheless, historically many important results have been obtained on molecular structure using ORD and hence this technique is described although CD spectroscopy has largely supplanted ORD. How is the ORD spectrum determined? Illustrated in the picture is first light is generated by a high intensity source of wavelength from about 190 nanometers to 900 nanometers which is passed through a monochromator and then through a polarizer. The absorption of plain polarized light by a chiral molecule or a solution of it is then recorded by an analyzer which is another polarizer. The angle at which the transmitted intensity is maximal or observed rotation in degrees alpha lambda. Modern automated instruments simultaneously vary the wavelength and plot the alpha lambda versus lambda which also illustrates the related absorption and CD spectrum of an asymmetric molecule. You can easily observe the absorption ORD and CD spectrum of a given asymmetric molecule. Now let us turn our attention to applications of ORD spectroscopy. Nowadays CD spectra has replaced ORD spectra because it is more defining in determining changes in protein or nucleic acid conformation on binding ligands, substrates or other functional changes. An interesting application of using ORD spectra to analyze glucose, albumin and fibrinogen in cells and biological samples wherein light scattering also occurs has been accounted for. The spectra were recorded using the biological sample itself. The absorption spectrum and optical rotatory dispersion 
were modeled using experimental data and the Drude's equation respectively between 500 and 2000 nanometers. A polarization sensitive Monte Carlo light propagation model was used to simulate scattering media. Unfold partial least squares and multi block partial least squares were used as regression methods to combine the spectral intensity and polarization signals and to predict glucose concentrations in both clear and scattering models. The results show that the combined approaches produce better predictive results in both clear and scattering media than conventional partial least squares analysis which uses intensity or polarization spectra independently. This technique in one of the more recently published papers gives a good hope for sometimes determining the presence of certain biomolecules in solutions from a derived from a biological specimens. Let me summarize the whole module. Asymmetric molecules such as proteins and nucleic acids can absorb plain polarized light and can be expressed as CD or ORD spectra which are plots of ellipticity or specific rotation versus wavelength respectively. Macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids give altered CD spectra on binding to substrate or other ligands thereby providing evidence for functional changes. Note here that proteins and nucleic acids are optically active due to their constituent molecules, amino acids and bases. CD and ORD spectra can be used as a non-invasive and indestructible assay for asymmetric macromolecules and function.